Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to saltwater etch aluminum. Aluminum is my favorite because it, well, it's kind of silvery and it does it really, really fast. So, I use kosher salt, distilled water, and I have a Rubbermaid container. It's a two cup. Rubbermaid container. I put anywhere from a half to a cup of salt in it and then I fill the rest up to this little line here with the distilled water just at room temperature. I don't heat it up or anything. Take a plastic fork, kind of mix it around, um, get it to dissolve a little bit but I, as you can tell in my actual, I don't exactly mix it all because I sometimes wonder if that's what makes it work out really well. Anyways, so I've already cut my picture out, which is what the professional etchers call the resistance or something similar to that. I've already cut it out and I've weeded it. I have a silhouette cameo that I do it with. I use vinyl. You can use masking tape. Some people do some kind of P and P method with their printer and stuff. I'm I am not that smart. So I just stick easy with the stickers. So what we'll do is we'll take our transfer tape. I have a small piece of transfer tape. Put it on. Rub it real well. Get it stuck to it real good. Of course it doesn't want to come off. Off. It's just like a sticker. Find our placement. And this is aluminum, by the way. Stick it on, rub it real well. And pull it off. See how it's stuck on there nice and well? What we'll do now is we'll take our masking tape and we'll tape the snot out of it because you'll want to make sure none of the water gets anywhere but where you want it to be which is on the anchor in this case It's just kind of like at a house. I don't know exactly what you would call what I'm doing with the tape there. Just make sure it goes all the way around it like that. Now I take some, this is copper electrical wire. It's like a 12 gauge. It's hard as crap to bend. But I did a little swirl on it just because, well, I'm swirly like that. <laughs> and you'll put it on the back and then tape around. Make sure it has a good connection to the to the metal and the wire. Bring your tape all the way around. Get it nice and tight so that way it's like waterproof because you don't. It's hard to keep it from doing any kind of marring or discoloration on the back of the metal. But you know, try your hardest because when the piece flips over, you don't want it to look nasty, and it'll look nasty if you're not careful. So that's, you'll end up with the lollipop kind of shape. What I use on the other side for my negative, um, again, I don't know the fancy term for it. I just have a piece of copper plumbing pipe that I, I had sawed in half to make some keychains for a lady out of. And I had some left over and I thought, hey, you know, that'll work out real well. So... I'll attach it and this I got it Radio Shack which sucks now since Radio Shacks for the most part have closed down everywhere but this is just a D battery holder and I've got a D battery here I've had the same battery for over a year and it's it's worked just fine I haven't had any issues with it that being said I probably will today and then I had soldered on some connections for alligator clips 
just to make the connecting to and from just just easier more flowy so we'll take it and uh just stick it off in the water it's usually best i probably should actually add more water actually i'm going to i'm going to add some more water because i like to keep it closer to that top i'll just throw some more water in there see how nasty that stuff is it's gross I'll just take my my nasty little fork that I use, stir it up a little bit. That's why I called it my nasty little fork. It's gross. Okay. And then we'll connect my piece to be etched. Set it in there. It should start bubbling here in just a second. If it doesn't, check your connections. Sometimes it takes a second though. And well, of course, it's causing me issues, so I'm going to check on and make sure my battery is okay because it's still not doing what it's supposed to be doing. battery out. I'm going to put another battery in. Okay, so apparently maybe my solder is broke on one of my connect my connectors. I've had this happen once before. Um, so I'm going to grab my other setup that I have. It's not your typical setup. It's um it's definitely redneck, but it more than works. And it actually my piece will come out a lot quicker cuz it's a lot bigger battery. But um typically with the D cell battery, I would leave the aluminum in for 15 to 20 minutes. You can literally just take it out and see cuz as the aluminum is etched, it'll start turning dark where your your little picture is so let me let me grab my redneck battery Hang on. and I call this my redneck battery because it's huge this is a battery that came out of one of my husband is an IT guy let me explain that and this is a battery that came out of one of his um, APCs, his backup units for one of his servers. So um, it's it's pretty big and pretty scary. And I keep waiting for it to blow up on me, but it hasn't yet. Knock on wood. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll we'll just disconnect that and we'll set that in there. See how it instantly starts bubbling. Can you hear it? Because it's so, I mean, it's so high powered that it does it quick, like literally five minutes, sometimes two, depending on how thick the aluminum actually is or how detailed the design is. Like I said, this is not atypical. I don't assume that you're going to go to a Battery Plus store and get an APC battery just to do this with. They are literally like, uh, I can't remember if it was 40 or $70 for it. But like I said, this was a battery that took was took out of an old APC unit that wasn't charging anymore. But the battery still had enough juice in them to do what I'm doing, which is why I say it's a scary battery. So it's literally been in there now. I should have done a timer, but it's literally probably been in there, what, less than a minute? And you can take it out and look, see how it's already started darkening. I have ate through aluminum this way. So, um, definitely pull it out every once in a while and just check it. Um, there was a top piece on it that wasn't done just right, but I think the rest of it's where it needs to be. So I'm just going to let it set for just another second or two and I'm going to pull it out and check it again. I 
paint for this instance it may be good and we'll just I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist I want the, all of the color to be exactly the same that's not always the case every piece of metal I don't it, you could have bought it at the same time it could have came off the same sheet it will do totally different from the last and it will sometimes it's a pain sometimes it works out beautifully and you're like oh I wish I had more of that kind yeah you can keep wishing because there's there's just not a guarantee see I hate when that happens too I don't like for my connectors to get wet because they will actually corrode and then I have to buy new connectors and replace them and it's just I'm lazy okay and we're done see how it's dark for the most part everywhere there's a little spot on the top there but I think that's just because it just didn't want to turn dark for me so what I'll do is I'll take a paper towel and I'll set it down go ahead and unconnect this and then I've got a kitchen towel over here I'm gonna wipe this off with because like I said I don't want them to get corroded so gloves for this because I do not like the way it feels on my hands. Again, I'm fickle. So we're going to unwrap it and see exactly how it did. Yes, my gloves are nasty. I believe in reusing. So I get the extra large gloves so I can take them right back off and put them back on again whenever I need to. And see how we're etched in there real nice and the camera's not in focus there we go see how it etched, it etched in real nice like so we'll take our towel and we'll dry it off you actually need to take this to the sink and wash it off because a couple days to a week later you'll have some residue salt start um, corroding and it'll come up to the surface and it just looks gross and remember how I said the back you it's hard to not do it let me get it in focus I'm sorry see how it kind of discolorates the back a little I didn't exactly get the tape water safe so that's just something you'll have to deal with if that happens and I haven't had any complaints on it but you know there's always that one so, also what I do is because it just does like a, a slight gray tint into the etch, I'll take a Sharpie or some paint, the uh, oil base paint from Sharpie, and I'll color it in and then I'll just clean it up with my steel wool. I use, um, Lord help, what is it? I think it's the 4000, or no, the 000. <laughs> Still wool, the extra, extra fine. But I use it for all of my pieces because I've been told I have a rustic look. But you just clean it up like that and then there you have an etched piece of aluminum. Once again, the camera is not in focus. And there it goes. There's your etched piece of aluminum with an anchor on it. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.